oh, Finn and Liam, this is your great aunt Claire. And I uh, talked to your dad about this and he thought it was a great idea. Uh, I would like to read to you some of my favorite books from when I was a kid. Um, they're by a guy called Thornton Burgess. Here's the first book, The Adventures of Danny Meadow Mouse. And he wrote about uh, little creatures that lived in uh, the meadow next to a farm. And there was a green forest next to the meadow. And there was the smiling pond that was near the great meadow. And in, uh, in these books, uh, we learn about Danny Meadow Mouse and Grandfather Frog and Jimmy the Skunk and Jerry the Muskrat and Peter Cottontail and all kinds of all kinds of other creatures and I really hope that you're going to enjoy these stories. This first book, The Adventures of Danny Meadow Mouse, was the first book that I ever read all by myself when I was six years old. So here we go. The Adventures of Danny Meadow Mouse by Thornton W. Burgess. Illustrated by Harrison Caddy, and I'll be holding up the book to show you the illustrations. And here's the first illustration, and it says, All Danny Meadow Mouse could think about was his short tail. Okay. Chapter 1. Danny Meadow Mouse is worried. Danny Meadow Mouse sat on his doorstep with his chin in his hands, and it was very plain to see that Danny had something on his mind. He had only a nod for Jimmy Skunk, and even Peter Rabbit could get no more than a grumpy good morning. It wasn't that he had been caught napping the day before by Reddy Fox and nearly made an end of. No, it wasn't that. Danny had learned his lesson, and Reddy would never catch him again. It wasn't that he was all alone with no one to play with. Danny was rather glad that he was alone. The fact is, Danny Meadow Mouse was worried. Now, worry is one of the worst things in the world, and it didn't seem as if there was anything that Danny Meadow Mouse need worry about. But you know it is the easiest thing in the world to find something to worry over and make yourself uncomfortable about. And when you make yourself uncomfortable... You are almost sure to make everyone around you equally uncomfortable. It was so with Danny Meadow Mouse. Striped Chipmunk had twice called him Cross Patch that morning, and Johnny Chuck, who had fought Reddy Fox for him the day before, had called him Grumpy. And what do you think was the matter with Danny Meadow Mouse? Why, he was worrying because his tail was too short. Yes, sir, that is all that ailed Danny Meadow Mouse that bright morning. You know, some people let their looks make them miserable. They worry because they are homely or freckled or short or tall or thin or stout, all of which is very foolish. And Daddy Me Danny Meadow Mouse was just as foolish in worrying because his tail was short. Oh, it is short. It certainly is all of that. Danny ne had never realized how short until he chanced to meet his cousin Whitefoot, who lives in the green forest. Oh, he was very elegantly dressed, but the most imposing thing about him was his long, slim, beautiful tail. Danny had at once become conscious of his own stubby little tail, and he had, and he had hardly any pride enough to hold his head up as became an honest meadow, meadow mouse. Ever since he had been... Well, that interruption was my kitty, Sertia. So let's, let's introduce her, since she seems to want to get into the screen. Yes, kitty. You have to stop interrupting the story. Yes, you do. Yes. Say hello to everybody, and then say goodbye. There you go, big girl. Now keep your tail out of my screen. Now she has a very long tail, a very long and magnificent tail. But she keeps putting it in front of the camera. All right. Back to Danny Meadow Mouse. Ever since, he had been thinking and thinking and wondering how his family came to have such short tails. Then he grew envious and began to wish and wish and wish 
that he could have a long tail like his cousin Whitefoot. He was so busy wishing that he had a long tail that he quite forgot to take care of the tail that he did have, and he pretty nearly lost it and his life with it. Old White Tail the Marsh Hawk spied Danny Meadow, spied Danny sitting there moping on his doorstep, and came sailing over the tops of the meadow grasses so softly that he all but caught Danny. If it hadn't been for one of the merry little breezes, Danny would have been caught. And all because he was envious. It is a bad, bad habit. Chapter 2 Danny Meadow Mouse and His Short Tail All Danny Meadow Mouse could think about was his short tail. He was so ashamed of it that whenever anyone passed, he crawled out of sight so that they should not see how short his tail was. Instead of playing as the sun, in the sunshine as he used to do, he sat and sulked. Pretty soon his friends began to pass without stopping. Finally, one day, old Mr. Toad sat down in front of Danny and began to ask questions. What's the matter? asked old Mr. Toad. Nothing, replied Danny Meadow Mouse. I don't suppose there really is anything the matter. But what do you think is the matter? said old Mr. Toad. Danny fidgeted and old Mr. Toad looked up at jolly, round, red Mr. Sun and winked. Sun is just as bright as ever, isn't it? he inquired. Yes, said Danny. Got plenty to eat and drink, haven't you? continued Mr. Toad. And this is, this is Mr. Toad saying, got plenty to eat and drink, haven't you? Okay. Yes, said Danny. Seems to me that that is a pretty good looking suit of clothes you're wearing, said Mr. Toad, eyeing Danny critically. Sunny weather, plenty to eat and drink. And good clothes? Must be you don't know when you're well off, Danny Meadow Mouse. Danny hung his head. Finally, he looked up and caught a kindly twinkle in old Mr. Toad's eyes. Mr. Toad, how can I get a long tail like my cousin Whitefoot of the Green Forest? He asked. So that's what's the matter. Ha, ha, ha. Danny Meadow Mouse, I'm ashamed of you. I certainly am ashamed of you, said Mr. Toad. What good would a long tail do you? Tell me that. For a minute, Danny didn't know just what to say. I, 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 I'd look so much better if I had a long tail, he ventured. Old Mr. Toad just laughed. You never saw a meadow mouse with a long tail, did you? Of course not. What a sight it would be. Why, everybody on the green meadows would laugh themselves sick at the sight. You see, you need to be slim and trim and handsome to carry a long tail well. And then, what a nuisance it would be. You would always have to be thinking of your tail and taking care to keep it out of harm's way. Look at me, I'm homely. Some folks call me ugly to look at, but no one tries to catch me as Farmer Brown's boy does Billy Mink because of his fine coat, and no one wants to put me in a cage because of a fine voice. I am satisfied to be just as I am, and if you'll take my advice, Danny Meadow Mouse, you'll be satisfied to be just as you are. Perhaps you are right, said Danny Meadow Mouse after a little. I'll try. Chapter 3 Danny Meadow Mouse plays hide and seek. Life is always a game of hide and seek to Danny Meadow Mouse. You see, he is such a fat little fellow that there are a great many other furry coated people and almost as many who wear feathers who would gobble Danny up for breakfast or for dinner if they could. 
Some of them pretend to be his friends, but Danny always keeps his eyes open when they are around and always begins to play hide and seek. Peter Rabbit and Jimmy Skunk and Striped Chipmunk and Happy Jack Squirrel are all friends whom he can trust, but he always has a bright twinkling eye open for Reddy Fox and Billy Mink and Shadow the Weasel and Old Whitetail the Marsh Hawk and several more, especially Hooty Owl at night. Now, Danny Meadow Mouse is a stout-hearted little fellow, and when R rough brother North Wind came shouting across the green meadows, tearing to pieces the snow clouds and shaking out the snowflakes until they covered the green meadows deep, 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 Danny just snuggled down in his warm coat in his snug little house of grass and waited. Danny liked the snow. Yes, sir, Danny Meadow Mouse liked the snow. He just loved to dig in it and make tunnels. Through these tunnels, in every direction, he could go where he pleased and when he pleased without being seen by anybody. It was great fun. Every little way, he made a little round doorway up beside a stiff stalk of grass. Out of this, he could peep at the white world and he could get the fresh, cold air. Sometimes, when he was quite sure that no one was around, he would scamper across on top of the snow from one doorway to another, and when he did this, he made the prettiest little footprints. Now, Reddy Fox knew all about those doorways and who made them. Reddy was having hard work to get enough to eat this cold weather, and he was hungry most of the time. One morning, as he came tiptoeing softly over the meadows, what should he see just ahead of him but the head of Danny Meadow Mouse pop out of one of those little round doorways? Reddy's mouth watered, and he stole forward ever more softly than ever. When he got within jumping distance, he drew his stout hind legs under him and made Reddy to spring. Presto! Danny Meadow Mouse had disappeared. Reddy Fox jumped the same, and began to dig as fast as he could make his paws go. He could smell Danny Meadow Mouse, and that made him almost frantic. All the time, Danny Meadow Mouse was scurrying along one of his little tunnels, and when finally Reddy Fox stopped digging because he was quite out of breath, Danny popped his head out of another little doorway and laughed at Reddy. Of course Reddy saw him, and of course Reddy tried to catch him there, and dug frantically just as before, and of course, Danny Meadow Mouse wasn't there. And here's a picture of Danny popped his head out of another doorway and laughed at Reddy Fox. After a while, Reddy Fox grew tired of this game and tried another plan. The next time he saw Danny Meadow Mouse stick his head out, Reddy pretended not to see him. He stretched himself on the ground and made believe that he was very tired and sleepy. <sighs> he closed his eyes. Then he opened them just the tiniest bit so that he could see Danny Meadow Mouse and yet seemed to be asleep. Danny watched him for a long time. Then he chuckled to himself and dropped out of sight. No sooner was he gone than, Danny, than Reddy Fox stole over close to the little doorway and waited. He'll surely stick his head out again to see if I'm asleep, and then I'll have him, said Reddy to himself. So he waited and waited and waited. By and by, he turned his head. There was Danny Meadow Mouse at another little doorway laughing at him. Chapter 4 Old Granny Fox Tries for Danny Meadow Mouse Danny Meadow Mouse had not enjoyed anything so much for a long time as he did that game of hide-and-seek. He tickled and chuckled all the afternoon as he thought about it. Of course, Reddy had been it. He had been it all the time, for never once had he caught Danny Meadow Mouse. If he had, uh, well, there wouldn't have been any more stories about Danny Meadow Mouse because there wouldn't have been any Danny Meadow Mouse anymore. But Danny never let himself think about this. He had enjoyed the game all the more because it had been a dangerous game. 
It had been such fun to dive into one of his little round doorways in the snow, run along one of his own little tunnels, and then peep out at another doorway and watch Reddy Fox digging as fast as ever he could at the doorway Danny had just left. Finally, Reddy had given up in disgust and gone off muttering angrily to try to find something else for dinner. Danny had sat up on the snow and watched him go. In his funny little squeaky voice, Danny shouted, Though Reddy Fox is smart and sly, hi hum diddle yo, I'm just as smart and twice as spry, hi hum diddle yo. That night, Reddy Fox told old Granny Fox all about how he had tried to catch Danny Meadow Mouse. Granny listened with her head cocked on one side. When Reddy told how fat Danny Meadow Mouse was, her mouth watered. You see, now that snow covered the green meadows and the green forest, Granny and Reddy had had work to get enough to eat, and they were hungry most of the time. I'll go down with you down on the meadows tomorrow morning, and then we'll see if Danny Meadow Mouse is as smart as he thinks he is, said Granny Fox. So bright and early the next morning, old Granny Fox and Reddy Fox went down on the meadows where Danny Meadow Mouse lives. Danny had felt in his bones that Reddy would come back, so he was watching, and he saw, saw them as soon as they came out of the green forest. When he saw old Granny Fox, Danny's heart beat a little faster than before, for he knew that Granny Fox is very smart and very wise and has learned most of the tricks of all of the other little meadow and forest people. This is going to be a more exciting game than the other, said Danny to himself, and scurried down out of sight to see that all his little tunnels were clear so that he could run fast through them if he had to. Then he peeped out of one of his little doorways hidden in a clump of tall grass. Old Granny Fox set ready to hunting for Danny's little round doorways, and as fast as he found them, Granny came up and sniffed at each. She knew that she could tell by the smell which one he had been at last. Finally, he, she came straight toward the tall bunch of grass. Danny ducked down and scurried along into one of his tunnels. He heard Granny Fox sniff at the doorway he had just left. <gasps> Suddenly, something plunged down through the snow right at his very heels. Danny didn't have to look to know that it was Granny Fox herself, and he squeaked with fright. Chapter 5 what happened on the green meadows? Thick and fast things were happening to Danny Meadow Mouse down on the snow-covered green meadows. Rather, they were almost happening. He hadn't minded when Reddy Fox all alone tried to catch him. Instead, he had made a regular game of hide-and-seek of it and had enjoyed it immensely. But now it was different. Granny Fox wasn't so easily fooled as Reddy Fox. Just Granny alone would have made the game dangerous for Danny Meadow Mouse. But Reddy was with her, and so Danny had two to look out for, and he got so many frights that it seemed to him as if his heart had moved right up into his mouth and he was going and it was going to stay there. Yes, sir, that is just how it seemed. Down in his little tunnels underneath the snow, Danny Meadow Mouse felt perfectly safe from Reddy Fox, who would stop and dig frantically at the little round doorway where he had last seen Danny. But old Granny Fox knew all about those little tunnels, and she didn't waste any time digging at the doorways. Instead, she cocked her sharp little ears and listened with all her might. Now, Granny Fox has very keen ears, oh, very keen ears, and she heard just what she hoped she would hear. She heard Danny Meadow Mouse running along one of his little tunnels under the snow. Plunge! Old Granny Fox dived right into the snow and right through the tunnel of Danny Meadow Mouse. Her two black paws actually touched Danny's tail. He was glad then that it was no longer. Ha! cried Granny Fox. I almost got him that time. Then she ran ahead a little way into the snow, listening as before. Plunge! Into the snow she went again. It was lucky for her, him that Danny had just turned into another tunnel, for otherwise she would surely have caught him. Granny Fox blew the snow out of her nose. Next time I'll get him, said she. Now, Reddy Fox is quick to learn, especially when it, it is a way to get something to eat. He watched Granny Fox, and when he understood what she was doing, 
he made up his mind to have a try himself, for he was afraid that if she caught Danny Meadow Mouse, she would think that he was not big enough to divide. Perhaps that was because Reddy is very selfish himself. So the next time Granny plunged into the snow and missed Danny Meadow Mouse just as before, Reddy rushed in ahead of her, and the minute he heard Danny running down below, he plunged in just as he had seen Granny do. But he didn't take the pains to make sure of just where Danny was, and so, of course, he didn't come anywhere near him. But he frightened Danny still more and made old Granny Fox lose her temper. <gasps> Poor Danny Meadow Mouse. He had never been so frightened in all his life. He didn't know which way to turn or where to run, and so he sat still, which, although he didn't know it, was the very best thing he could do. When he sat still, he made no noise. And so, of course, Granny and Reddy Fox could not tell where he was. Old Granny Fox sat and listened and listened and listened and wondered where Danny Meadow Mouse was. And down under the snow, Danny Meadow Mouse sat and listened and listened and listened and wondered where Granny and Reddy Fox were. Pooh, said Granny Fox after a while. That Meadow Mouse thinks he can fool me by sitting still. I'll give him a scare. Then she began to plunge into the snow this way and that way. And sure enough, pretty soon she landed so close to Danny Meadow Mouse that one of her claws scratched him. Well, that's five chapters. And the next chapter is chapter six. Danny Meadow Mouse remembers. Reddy Fox forgets. And I think I'll read that the next time. So this has been uh, the first five chapters of The Adventures of Danny Meadow Mouse, and I hope you enjoyed them, and I will make a video for the next few chapters for you very soon. Love you. Bye.